was Mike Ditka would enter that select circle if his club could beat arch rival Green Bay, led by ex Bear quarterback Mike Tomzak. An early Tomzak touchdown drew a quick response from Chicago's current quarterback. Harbaugh back to throw. Bears pick up the blitz. Rainbow's the right side. Davis in the end zone makes a leaping adjustment and makes the catch for the touchdown. Jim Harbaugh and Wendell Davis combined twice for scores, and a now healthy Brad Muster added two more touchdowns as Chicago remained tied for first in the NFC Central. He takes toss, Muster sweeping right, student body right, Muster cuts it back to the floor, yeah. and he ends up touchdown! With the victory, the Bears continue their longtime domination of the NFL's oldest rivalry. Games in the history of the National Football League. If you include the one playoff game they once upon a time had, this would be the 143rd meeting of their storied rivalry. Bears had an advantage this year with the schedule. This marked the third time that they played a game that had 10 days off before they played another one. Oh, yeah, another advantage they had today? They're a better team than the Green Bay Packers. Here we go, wind it up from Soldier Field. Packers have been doing the Lindy all year long. Mike Ditka, his team had lost two in a row and is trying to get him fired up. And Jim Harbaugh had played poorly the last two weeks. Had a feeling he'd have a good game, but not early. Fast is picked off by Vinny Clark and the Packer in business in Chicago territory. Or are they? But the way the pack season has gone, not one, but two penalties against Green Bay, so we nullify it twice. So the Bears continue the drive. And they capitalize. When Brad Colonel Muster in the end zone with the football. It's a touchdown, 7-0 Chicago. 7-3 score, Jim Harbaugh's arm is hit. And this time, Vinny Clark gets the pick. And you know this one counted, so Green Bay is in business. Another highlight for the pack, there weren't a lot today, but Mike Tomzak, the former Bear, the jump pass to Jackie Harris at the touchdown. And Lindy and Fonny's Packers leading 10-7, but not the ball. Chicago's next drive, Harbaugh on third and eight. Black get him, rumble, bump, bump, stumble inside the 10-yard line, set up a first and goal for the Chicago Bears. Two plays later, Brad Muster in the kitchen with the lead pipe. It's a touchdown for the Colonel, 14-10 the Bears. Yeah, Chris Brad Muster does a nice job of weaving his way through the defense here, but a sloppy tackling job by the Green Bay Packers. Now the Bears smelling some blood, as they do very well. Harbaugh to Wendell Davis, 20 yards, touchdown, and the Bears lead it 21-10. Second half, and Lindy has seen this happen before. Watch Harbaugh with the floater. Davis with the reception, who came back to the football, Tom. Yeah, Wendell Davis does a good job of two things here, giving the defender a little bit of a nudge in the back and then coming back and concentrating on the football for the touchdown. Jim Harbaugh threw for over 200 yards, had a pair of touchdowns. Wendell Davis, the most catches for Chicago Bears, is now as 54 since Dick Gordon had uh, more in 1970. Bears don't throw the ball a lot. They did today, Muster two, Davis two, and the Bears beat the Packers 27 to 13. They have swept the Packers now six out of the last seven years. And really, Tommy, uh, not unexpected that the Bears would come out with fire in their eyes, especially with the extra rest. I think the extra rest and also we all saw Mike Dicka ranting and raving after that loss last week. You had to expect the Bears to come out and play some smash mouth football. I thought they put a lot of good pressure on Tom Sack during the course of the day. And the surprising thing, without Neil Anderson in, in the game, Brad Muster picked up the slack for them running the football. Those are some hard feelings really between Harbaugh and Tom Zag. Remember, they both were battling for the job after McMahon left. Harbaugh coming out on top today. He's done that uh, more often. Although, Tom's like, I couldn't play bad for the pack. It's Jim Harbaugh that when he does well, the Bears have won this year. For example, in the 10 games the Bears have won, as they have to mark the 10 and 4, he has thrown at least one touchdown pass in all of them. In their 10 wins, he's thrown for about 60%. In the four losses, no TD passes picked off eight times. You read the quarterback, you read whether they won or they lost. They move Gentry out of the backfield on motion to the left. Muster the long set back. First down from the 20 of Green Bay. Harbaugh pop fly to the right side. Davis over the shoulder. Catch, catch, go! Jim Harbaugh, Wendell Davis, and the Chicago defense dominated the Packers all day. For the Bears, a step closer to the playoffs. For Green Bay, a step closer to a house cleaning project at the end of the season. We'll have the complete story from Soldier Field next up on Instant Replay. The Bears did pretty much what they wanted with Green Bay, and they beat the Packers 27 to 13. Neil Anderson was out. He didn't play, but Brad Muster sure did. When he's healthy, he's about as impressive as a fullback in the whole National Football League could be. A seven-yard blast in the first quarter. Bears lead at seven zip. In the second period, the former Bear, Mike Tomzak, put the Packers in front for the first and only time 
flip to Jackie Harris off play action and 10-7 Green Bay on top. Muster, though, took care of that on the Bears' next series, picking his way six yards for the touchdown here, 14-10 Chicago, and this sequence was the beginning of the end for the Packers today. Tom Zach on the first play after the kickoff, tried to squeeze one in, and he was intercepted by Jim Morrissey, and the return to the Packers' 20-yard line. And then on the first play after that, it was Jim Harbaugh going for the end zone to Wendell Davis. And Wendell had his man beaten. A touchdown, Bears, 21 to 10. And that was about it. Those same two hooked up on the Bears' final TD of the day. This time it was Davis making a great adjustment in the end zone for a 35-yard touchdown pass as the Bears win at 27-13 in the 142nd meeting of these two NFL rivals. It was a victory the Bears had to have to stay ahead of Detroit in the NFC Central, and it was an especially sweet win for Jim Harbaugh, who won a game within a game in beating the Packers. Rich King has more on that in his post-game report from Soldier Field. The subplot in this one was clear. Harbaugh had accused Tom Zack of leaking plays to the opposition when the two quarterbacks were vying for a job with the Bears. After today's game, the two players met on the field, Harbaugh saying he extended the olive branch. I've been in his shoes before you lose a tough game like that. Uh, it's, not, it's not easy to be, you know, real talkative after the game. All I said was, you know, let's bury the hatchet. And uh, he kind of nodded and we just shook hands. The hatchet's buried. Tom. Jim said it, the hatchet's buried. It's all gone? Yeah, it's gone. Forgotten. Gone. See ya. Well, it was the Bears that said see ya on offense today. Wendell Davis catching two touchdown passes. Here is the first. And the second one was even better. Davis saying the pressure was on the Bears' offense after two straight losses. Yeah, we feel we had to, we had to do something, get, get some touchdowns. Uh, you know, in, in the past two games, we, we get down there and come away with nothing. Um, I think uh, we had the pressure on us today to uh, get the ball in the end zone, and uh, we did a good job of it. We made sure we got points when we were down there. On the ground, Brad Muster was back, and he scored twice. Looking like a high jumper here, Muster with the usual low-key assessment of the Bears' success. It seemed like, you know, we had them spread out and we could do what we wanted to do. I think we took them out of that, you know, stop the run mentality. We were throwing the ball. And, um, you know, I'm not too sure we could have run a little more, but hey, you know, we just got to win, right? So that's what we did. There were some sour moments. Johnny Bailey coughed up the ball here in the year long epidemic of special team misery. Mike Ditka, however, defended Bailey. I'm not going to criticize him. I'm not going to crucify him. I had my one week. Thanksgiving was my week. I'm done. I'm done. You guys do it. I don't want to do it anymore. He'll be back there next week. This was Ditka's 100th career victory, and he reacted in typical Ditka fashion. Happiness with a twist of the bitter. Yeah, it means a lot to me because of my pride, because when I came here, people said I wouldn't stay here. And I stayed here for 10 years, and whether I trick somebody or not, I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of the kind of football we played for 10 years. And for those who don't like that, then I think you're very sorry people. Well, this was no doubt the Bears' biggest victory of the season. It greatly solidifies the division title hopes. The Bears wrap it up next weekend against Tampa Bay right here. Then after that, at San Francisco. Uh, he's effective. I, I think half his, part of his big game is the way he looks. People just doesn't take him serious as a running back. <laughs> Well, somebody better start because that guy is uh, doing a great job. He scored there early in the game to make it 7-0. Here's one of the uh, few dark moments today out there. Johnny Bailey fumbling a punt. The special teams again had some problems in this game. Well, I, I think Johnny was just wanting to do something so, so hard and try too hard, and he made a mistake. We go second quarter now. Tom Zach on the play action fake. He's got his tight end out there. Uh, Mike Singletary, I saw, duck to the middle and then try to get back out there in coverage and couldn't quite get there in time. So it's 10-7 Green Bay there. But uh, I don't know about you. I never really felt like anybody was in big trouble here, even though you were behind. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, it was just a case where they had to turn over and they had cut some points out of it, but we knew we were still in control of the game. Bears came back offensively, a nice block by Van Horn on that 16-yard run by Harbaugh, and then Muster, here we go again, left side, huh? That sweep, I, I, <laughs> I guess the more I talk about it, the more Johnny Rowland calls that play, and Brad is very effective with it. I, hey, keep doing it, if it works, uh, keep going for it. Those Pac-10 guys are tough, aren't they? <laughs> That's true. He has some great blocks here. Brad did a great job in the but yeah, guys staying with blocks, uh, helping him get into the end zone. Well, this is a sequence that really killed the Packers because the first play after the pickoff, Mike, who has a tendency to try to squeeze that ball in between defenders, did it there, and Morrissey picked him off. Uh, you know, Mike really made a bad pass. We really had all the zones covered, and he, 
He threw it to two guys, two guys in our area, and we, uh, Jim made a great play in picking it off. Well, I just knew they were going for the quick strike after that, too. And again, the first play afterward, and Wendell Davis makes one of his two catches. Uh, both went for touchdowns. You'll see the other one later on. In the third quarter now, uh, Mike Singletary set the tone here. This was the first play of the period, and uh, these guys weren't going anywhere in the second half. Well, we had a tendency every now and then coming out a little flat in the third quarter, and we really wanted to come out hard this third quarter and make some plays and shut them down. Uh, Richard Dent from the backside tracked down Thompson there, made a great play. Offensively, uh, Keith Jennings today, Mark, had a great game, four catches, and uh, he really stepped up with the injury to Thornton. Well, Jug did a great job stepping in and throwing some good blocks and just catching the ball and making some plays for us. And talk about making plays, here's one of the specialty plays by Wendell Davis, coming back in the end zone to catch it, beat the defender for the touchdown, 35-yard play, and 27-13 uh, because Kevin missed the point after, and I saw Ditka yelling at him today. Maybe that uh, inspired <laughs> some of that bad mood after the game. I, I don't know. He's, he's always in his great mood. I, I don't look at his bad mood. It's typical Ditka mood. Yeah. Just you never know what to expect mood, I guess, <laughs> yeah, is what it is. Basically. Okay, late in the fourth quarter here, Tim Ryan, Southern Cal, makes the strip on Tom Zack and got the fumble, too. Now that pretty much ended the game, and the Bears win it by a final of 27-13. Okay, first quarter, Chicago strikes first. Brad Muster takes it in for the eighth as five Packers miss tackles. 7-3 Bears after one. Second quarter, the Packers take the lead. Tom Zack on the play action. It's tight end Jackie Harris, who's wide open. 10-7 in favor of the Pack, and Lindy and Fani says, whew, did we need that one. Still in the second, Bears regain the lead for good. Muster again, breaking tackles again. Six yards for the score, 14-10 Bears. On the Packers' next possession, they give it right back. Tom Zack throws a duck that's picked off by Jim Morrissey. He takes it down to the Packer 20-yard line. Next play, Jim Harbaugh hits Wendell Davis. 20 yards for the score, 21 to 13 Bears at the half. Late in the third, Chicago puts it away. Harbaugh to Davis again, this time good for 35 yards in the touch. Extra point is blocked, doesn't matter. Bears go on to beat. Catch in the end zone, the 35-yard touchdown, and the Packers lose again. Ditka getting his 100th win as a coach. Of them. The Bears got on the scoreboard first this afternoon as running back Brad Mustard took the toss, rumbled right, hurtling would-be tacklers for the score to make it 7-0 in favor of Chicago. A Packers field goal made it a 7-3 game. Then in the second quarter, Mike Tomczak gets some revenge on his old teammates as he connect, uh, connects with Jackie Harris from short yardage as the Packers took the lead 10-7. But the Bears regained the advantage quickly as they drove 73 yards in 10 plays with Muster breaking three tackles on this six-yard scamper as Chicago went back on top 14 to 10. Tomczak threw an interception on the first play following the kickoff and on the first play after the turnover, Jim Harbaugh went up top to Wendell Davis from 20 yards out as the Bears quickly made it 21 to 10. Another Chris Jackie field goal made it 21-13. Then in the third quarter, it's Harbaugh and Davis again, this time for 35 yards in the score as the Bears up their record to 10-4 on the year this afternoon. The 27-13 loss was the Packers' fifth defeat in their last six games and dropped Green Bay's record to 3-11 for the season. Next week, the Packers play their final home game as they'll entertain division co-leader Detroit at Lambeau Field. Another bitter rivalry took place. Um, you can't go out there and make mistakes. If you make mistakes, you're going you're gonna to end up paying for it. It's the same story we've heard all season, folks. The Packer mistakes lead to another loss. The Bears win 27-13, handing Green Bay its 11th loss of the season. You know, we've got a good group of guys that want to win and, and are trying desperately to win, but it just seems like we can't get it to go. And, of course, the Packers play the Lions next, and the Lions kept paying. Tough time bringing down big fullback Brad Muster today. Late first quarter, Brad barrels through for an eight-yard score, 7 nothing Bears. With the score 7-3 in the second quarter, Scott Steven puts some heat on Jim Harbaugh, deflects the pass. Rookie Vinny Clark's there, returns at 20 yards to the Chicago 30. Eight plays later, Mike Tomczak, the former Bear, hits Jackie Harris, one-yard score. 10-7, Packers are up. But uh-oh, here comes Muster again. Brad was nimble. Brad was slick. Brad scored from six yards out real quick. 14-10 Bears. Next play from scrimmage. Tom Zack is picked off by former Michigan State linebacker Jim Morrissey. His first interception of the year. Back to the 20. Very next play, Jim Harbaugh. Hits Wendell Davis. Vinnie Clark beaten on the play. 21-10 Chicago. The Bears led 21-13 at the half. 
This was supposed to be a Harbaugh Tom Zach showdown, but it was Harbaugh who stole the show. 16 of 25, 209 yards, two touchdowns, both to Davis, both on Vinnie Clark, 27-13. Midway through the fourth, the Packers gambled on fourth and three, but Tom Zach fumbles the snap. Tom Zach fumbled again on the Packers' next possession, and there you have it. 27 to 13 is the final. The Packers dropped to 3 and 11. Mike Ditka gets his 100th win. The Packers are at a loss. Pretty well at times, and, and uh, certainly played better than we played last time we played these guys. And we gave a lot better account of ourselves, but at the same time, we self destructed a few times. The reason, you know, this one hurts is it's the Bears. I mean, that's, you know, that's the bottom line. And uh, even after playing them and losing 27-13, I still I just feel like we're a better team. And, you know, we just, I don't know what, why we didn't get it done, but we didn't. I don't think the confidence is as bad as people would think, because I think it, it's hurting a little bit now. But I don't think we're anywhere in indulgence or anything like that. Soldier Field. Opened in 1924. First football game was played here on November 22nd, 1924. Notre Dame edging Northwest in 13 to 6. And right now, we've got a game between the Bears and the Packers in Chicago on top. 27-13, 11-25, left in the game. Ball, been throwing it away, and in a couple instances, throwing it where it doesn't belong and getting it picked off. That's so why Tom Zach has had happy feet today. Second and 10. And he's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. But Randy, the field actually still looks in pretty decent condition. Again, you talk about that middle lane, the runway, if you will, at O'Hare number two, looking a little dirty, but, but not bad. See, now this is an instance where, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. This field is not in good shape. Mm -hmm. The Bears know it. The Bears love the fact that it's in bad shape because they expect it. It's an advantage for them. But this field is chewed up, the grass is dead, it's a tough field to play on, and it suits this style of football that the Bears are playing. Second and 10 for the Packers. All at their own 35. 424 left Packers trailing by 14. Remember Tom Drex going right into the wind and right into the teeth of a fierce rush. And got nailed by Richard Dent. Dan is kind of like that great white shark from Jaws. And here he is right up here. He's in the neutral zone of the ball, but he's like that great white shark. You don't know when he's going to show up, but you know sooner or later he is going to show up. Well, no way. And it's a loose ball. And the referee signaling Chicago ball. Tim, Tim Ryan. Ryan. Tim Ryan strips that ball out and recovers the fumble. Boy, talk about a complete reversal of 89 for Green Bay when everything went their way. This year, it has been just the opposite. And here's Big Ryan right here working against Tony Mandarich. Mandarich tries to wheel him around, but Ryan gets the edge on him. You saw Mandarich for a second had that ball in his hand, hit him on the hand. But as it comes out and bounces off Mandarich, Ryan is there on the ground. Great job of anticipation by Ryan to get that pile out there at the last minute. The big leads, at least the teams that aren't the 49ers. The 49ers have historically maintained their lead, but New Orleans has done it before and the Rams have done it before. Get out to the big leads and then play back to the pack. And like we said earlier, they do lose to the Cowboys. Atlanta beats Los Angeles in Anaheim today. That locks those te two teams up at nine and five. Atlanta, of course, will be going for its first NFC West division title since 1980. And Mike Ditka, as you mentioned at the top of the game, looking for victory number 100. Well, he's only two minutes and 22 seconds away from that. As a matter of fact, Ditka owns the NFC Central division, coming into the game here with a total of 53 victories against NFC Central division coaches. <laughs> and all the other coaches in the NFC Central during the same period have 54 total wins. I'd say that's pretty good. That's pretty strong. You know, we asked him about the 105th victory. So, you know, Mike, how important is, is it really? He goes, well, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I knew what it was. I didn't know it was a record. I didn't know, I mean, not a record, didn't know it was something there for me to have. He says, but you know, there is nothing I love more than winning a game, whether it's my first game or my 15th game or my 100th game. He says, we win the game, I get in the locker room, I light up a cigar, and I enjoy them. 
And you saw on the screen that Green Bay has called its last timeout with 2.22 remaining. Chicago has two remaining. Well, Randy, you and I were talking about the field, and again, up here it looks all right. You were down there, and you said it's in bad shape. The fans appreciated how the Bears played on it, no matter what the condition. You get used to when you play here, starting at 12 o'clock, but I mean, that's a morning game. And that is a two-minute warning. Dick is Bears on top by 14. Minutes left in the game. Mike Ditko not only will pick up victory number 100, but the Bears will improve their record to 10 and 4 ahead of Detroit. Detroit taking on the Jets in a 4 o'clock Eastern time start. And of course, Green Bay drops to 3 and 11. Has it twice? Can't do it. And Chicago, and what is known as the win the game move, will let the clock run out. And Lindy Infante. What a season for Lindy as his squad drops to 3 and 11. And Chicago improves to 10 and 4 with a 27 13 victory over Green Bay. Well, Ditka said very confidently yesterday. He really didn't have many worries going into this game, and I think he had a real good read on his players and how well they would do today, even without Neil Anderson. Sometimes you think you're never going to come. Exactly, and obviously Mike Ditka has got that 100 twin. Long time come. He's going to get inside, and he's going to light that cigar. And you saw the thumb as he acknowledged the fact that, yes, victory number 100 is sweet.